This is episode two of In the Cipher B Boy podcast. And on this episode, we dive deep with our featured guest into musicality, what musicality means to him, connecting with the music, and he also shares with us a way where we can develop musicality in our own dance. Crazy. We go over a wide variety of topics, so this is one you'll have to listen to more than once, I guarantee it. All right, let's get straight into it. Roll the intro. Welcome to the In The Cypher B-Boy podcast, where on every episode we interview a B-boy or B-girl, and they share their experience in this dance to help you become a better dancer. Now in this episode, we're chatting with our featured guest, Anthony De Niro, but you probably know him as Why Not. Now Why Not explores the design, sustainability, history, and community of hip-hop. Through a futurist lens, Why Not's work manifests in architecture, typography, dance design, and music. Senior Vice President of the legendary Rock Steady Crew, Why Not's reputation in the dance world precedes him. As a b-boy, he works internationally at judging battles and teaching workshops. In Why Not's vision of sustainability of hip-hop, teaching and mentorship are paramount. Currently, his classes can be found on a workshop basis internationally as well as online or in person through Arizona State University. Alongside his dancing and teaching, Why Not creates two- and three-dimensional visual works that construct the future of the hip-hop aesthetic. His most recent work is a wooden chair fashioned to resemble a graffiti letter S. All right, now let's chat with our featured guest, Why Not? Yo, Tony, you ready to get into it? I'm ready, man. What's going on? Chilling, man. How about you? I'm good. I'm hanging out. I got my coffee. I'm ready to talk. <laughs> good. That makes two of us, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's start by telling us about your personal life and what, what you're doing outside of breaking currently. Um, currently I have a couple of things that I've been, uh, that I've invested in actually in these past few years. And, uh, one of them is education and the other is, uh, music and visual art. I, I kind of piece them together because I, I, I think about them simultaneously and I want to kind of merge the two, um, especially in theater. I want to think about how I want to perform visual art along with music. And uh, education-wise, I'm kind of going on this, um, I mean, I, I, I obtained my master's degree about two years ago, and I'm really interested in teaching at a university, if that's something that's not possible, um, or maybe not a good idea for me. I've been kind of like struggling with that concept, then I'm thinking about really looking forward to starting my own school or some type of private organization uh, where... We talk about the arts um, through through hip hop pretty much, but we're like speaking about visual music and dance and try to think of some sort of uh, kind of Bauhaus concept of mixing all these ideas into one and give someone a real educational experience. So that's that's what's on the table right now, man. Damn, that's so crazy. Where are you at with that? Is it just a concept right now? Um, no, it's pretty deep, man. I, I've been writing curriculum uh, ever since I was in school. So I have a lot of this stuff laid out and on paper. Um, definitely solid in my mind, but I realize that for other people to see it, I have to get it into some sort of format or structure. So I've been doing that now um, these past like few months, just really trying to get things um, recorded through videotape, me just speaking about it and also just putting it in some type of structure on paper. Um, and uh, and I've been applying to a ton of universities, man. So if one of them picks up, picks me up, then I'll be kind of like starting my program there or at least starting to get my feet wet in terms of like dealing with people and you know, on that type of level where it'd be semester based, you know, project based work. Dang, sweet. And I know you you have a lot of uh, experience doing lectures in the past through uh, universities. What kind of what kind of things do you do you do in those lectures? Um, it's a mix of stuff because it's it's kind of hard, man. Like people, um, or universities, most you know know that I do just a lot of stuff with dance. So I get asked to do um, lectures about dance and talk about dance, and some of them are based on other things. Like I'll talk about music, I'll talk about visual art. Sometimes I like to talk about all of it. It all kind of works together for me. 
So I don't mind kind of like going into one specific topic. I think that's cool, you know, but I'm trying to uh, show the other um, elements, if you will, and, and how they're relative to, to what dance is for me. So um, I'm hoping to do a little bit more with that. But yeah, I've done a bunch, man. I've been going all over the place talking about, you know, certain things in terms of um, also therapy, man, music therapy, you know, uh, dance therapy, how this stuff can kind of work with your mental as well as your physical. So it's all across the board, man. There's a lot of ways we can go and speak about these things. Beauty, man. Speaking of dance, why don't you tell us a little bit more how you got started, uh, started breaking? Mm, I always try to think about like, what, what can I pinpoint as like the, the beginning? Like what's the nucleus of all this stuff? And I have to dedicate that to my mom, you know, because She's a woman that just always had music on in the house and she would dance very often. Uh, she's more of like a Lindy Hop hustle type disco queen. You know, that was her era. So she's very much into that style of music and dance. And that was like the first thing for me. And when I started to see um, something relative to that, which is honestly was like top rock was some of the early things that I saw and house dance uh, were were similar. I was like, oh, I started seeing that hustle step and that potty beret and that back step. And I said, man, what is that? Um, but I was like, I really love this music too at the same time. So it was like, it was a marriage of the music and the dance for me um, that got me excited because before dance, I was into playing music. I was into jazz um, and the dance and the music aspect of I guess hip hop or you can say funk or old 70s style music is what really pulled me in. Um, I started seeing it more. I, I had to ask some questions like, where do you find this stuff? I mean, it, you know, when I started, it was early to mid 90s and we're, we're, you know, slightly underground, I guess you could say at that point. Um, and it was hard to find it. You had to like really seek it out. Um, I was in North Jersey at this time in Passaic, New Jersey. So I had to like really think about, uh, you know, if I can't find it in my city, where, where do I get this at? You know, so I asked a ton of questions and everyone pointed me to the Bronx, man. I eventually went to the Bronx and, and, you know, sure enough, there's, there's crazy legs and he's teaching at the Hunts Point Community Center. And it was just like kind of crazy, man. But through, through certain, like to make a long story short, through, through certain friends that I met, um, you know, I, I'm going to say in the scene because I kind of met people through, you know, music, martial art, dance and all this stuff. And I started meeting people and they all can, gave me a lead or a piece of information. And then I sought it out for myself or those people brought me to where I needed to go and I found it. And since then, man, I've, I've fell in love with it and I continue to um, learn about this culture. And I think it's amazing. Love it, man. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about those early influences and why they had such a big impact on you? Honestly, I don't know why, man. It was just exciting. You know, I was young. So, you know, at the age of 13, 14, you see things and just whatever gets you bright eyed, I guess you start gravitating towards, you know, it was the energy and the dance yeah. that I really related to. I was like, man, this is this is crazy. Like, there's just something about it that I just really got into. Um, gravitated towards and that's that's just where I went but um you know it's it it starts to take different shape as you get older but I, I would definitely say that that's the initial part of it it's just exciting which is why you know when people you know want to really bring forward the um the dance and cultural aspect of it sometimes it's it's like a dynamic you know which is why the moves the dance all of it is so relevant to like getting people involved because you never know what's really going to snag this kid. You know, what is he going to relate to? Is, or is she going to relate to? Is she going to relate to this, you know, move or flip that happens? Or are they going to relate to the way that someone just reacted to the music? Or are they going to relate to some type of character? You know, it's all, it could be anything. And um, I kind of felt just all of it. You know, I, I dug all of it. There was aspects of it that I just thought were so different to what I was seeing in my everyday life. And, um, and that was it, man. I got pulled in and the music too, man. I always relate things to music because I really think that that's the main thing for me is that, I mean, it, the dance is one thing, but it's the reactions and the feelings of the people when the music is playing, 
which does it. I mean, it doesn't even have to be dance at that point. It could be just a gesture, which I think is very dance related, you know, but it's just like, oh, like people's face used to turn like, oh man, this beat is, oh, you know, it's like things like that got me so involved, you know. Um, and then the rest is research, man, because, you know, I'm, I'm a 90s kid. I'm not from the 70s or the 80s. I was born in 81. You know, this is stuff you have to seek out. If you don't know about it, you have to search about it. You know, you got to find it. You got to meet people. That's that's the great part about it. It becomes this big social circle that you become a part of. And uh, and it feels like a fight club in a way, man, because there's not, you know, it's not out there in public so much. At least at that time, it wasn't. Maybe a little bit more now, but I don't know. I love that you start talking about music and, and the energy. Like, it really shows in the way you dance. And you blew me away and continue to blow me away and the way you talk about music now, what is musicality to you? Um, it's a feeling. It's a frequency, you know. Um, and it's a time. It's a timing thing. It's rhythm. It's all of those things. Um, but I think most importantly, it's this feeling. It's this sort of mood. It's, it's something that, for example, uh, there's a tone in a lot of different sounds of music. When you hear a bass tone and it's low and it gives you a certain feeling or you hear the crash of a cymbal or, you know, some type of high pitched uh, synth coming in. It's like you have to, you get this feeling from it. And then, you know, when you dance, then you have to react to it and you react based off of how you're feeling. I feel like that's ultimately what musicality is. So when I see people dance and I'm, getting all these different colors and moods and tones and feelings and then like it changes and if I don't see them change I'm kind of like man did they not feel that is this something they can't hear I don't know what it is but you know it takes you on this ride and and I think I got a lot of that just from playing music man from just being a musician myself I've been able to um you know really lock in and I think that's really where it comes for me in the dance gotcha and do you ever have a hard time connecting to to some music? I went through a couple phases, I think, where it kind of went in and out. There becomes this thing where you like, m maybe you get a little bit picky. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I like this style of music. I don't like that style of music, whatever. But I think as my um, experience has been growing, um, I'm I'm more and more open. So I find things inside something that someone might call shit, you know, but I'm like, you know what, there's something in here that I dig, you know, I'm starting to really see the greatness in all types of things. So inside those sounds, I can find myself, man. And, and you know, either wh whether it sounds good or sounds bad, it, it still gives you a feeling and you can react to it, you know, so I try to just tap into what that is. Totally. And one thing that uh, I know some people struggle with, including myself, is that feeling is, is that something that you can train i know you, you talked about um playing music and that helped you uh, develop a connection to the music but how would you say yeah. like people can can train that and develop that kind of feeling i think playing music is one way it's definitely one way because when you have a physical attachment to a, an instrument or something you start to understand that a little bit more with dance it's a little bit of an outside experience because the music is being played for you and then you're just reacting to that when you're an instrumentalist, you're playing, but you're physically interacting with this object that's making a sound. So there's a whole nother thing there um, that you're getting. And I think that's one aspect that dancers should try, even if it's not something that they think that they can excel in or even want to do. Um, it just gives you another layer of knowledge that you can use as a dancer. So I, I always you know, try to tell dancers to pick up an instrument, even if it's a cowbell or something, whatever, you know, anything to just add some type of um, understanding of that interaction, then it's important. Mm -hmm. um, that, that That's probably the biggest thing, man. The rest of it is just like really learning the technique of the dance that you have and then just applying it to the music, you know. Um, that would be the other thing because that would then be the the next step because you have to speak the language of the dance that you're doing. So whether you're a popper or a locker, b-boy, b-girl, you have to know that um, there's a foundation of that movement and, and the more that of that that you know, then you can apply that at any moment and it becomes a little more natural. 
that you can just go there. You don't even have to think about the things you're doing. You eventually want to get to that hypnotic place where the music is taking you. And if your technique level is high, you can demonstrate that when you're dancing. Totally makes sense. So then in practices, maybe now, maybe before, how are you developing that, uh, that technique? Through time. Yeah. Through time, uh, you, you really got to sit there and, and break stuff down, you know. Um, you know, foundation is always a, a funny word. I mean, everyone has their own kind of view on it, too. But um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> if we have to speak in a timeline, you know, we talk about how everything started on top. Then people started bringing things down to the floor. Um, and then the, you know, dynamic or gymnastic kind of feel got added to it. Um, you know, breaking is very complex. So there's all these things that we have to work on. And you can kind of like micromanage that stuff. So you can say, okay, um, I'm going to work on kind of standing up to this music and I'm just going to do that for as long as I can. And then you can say, all right, I'm going to transition to the floor. So I'm going to work on these drops. I'm just going to like stand up, dance, drop to the floor, get up, stand up, dance, drop to the floor, get up and try to think of many different ways that I could do that. While you're doing it, you're training yourself physically. But um, now I'm micromanaging the things that I'm doing so I can kind of focus on each aspect of the dance at a time. You know, sometimes I will do that. But one element that doesn't really get taken out of that is, is I have to like throw it as if I'm really into the music. So you can get like real kind of, you know, no disrespect, but slightly nerdy, I guess, in a way where you're <laughs> just like there, like, all right, hand here, foot here, do this here. And that's the science of it. And that's dope. You know, I think that's a cool thing to do as well. But then there's a there's a point where you have to just let that go and you throw it, you know, don't think feel like Bruce Lee says, you know, that's your moment where, OK, you've trained all this stuff. But now put a put an emotion on that and move through it now without even having to think so hard about the technical aspect. Let it become now second nature or something like that, you know. Totally, kind of becoming free in a way. Mm -hmm. Love it, man. So when you're judging, are these things that you look out for? Yeah, yeah. I try to see if people are tapped in like that, you know. And if they're not, then I can, you know, I know enough of the dance, I, I feel, because I study it all the time, man. I, I don't ever stop, like, really practicing and or studying the dance. I then look at their technique, you know, and and... What are they doing? Are, do they have that down? I mean, there's so many ways you can approach this um, that I don't I don't think one necessarily, you know, is better than the other either. I just see what people are bringing to the table. And especially when, when I think about battling, I think of it as, as war. And there's many ways you can win a war. You know, it's all about strategy. So, you know, whatever people are bringing in that moment, I'll, I'll never judge them just based off of that, but I'll, I'll judge them in that moment only. And I'm looking at what they're doing, you know, what are they bringing to the table? And it always is in comparison to the other person. It's not just about them because they're battling that person. <laughs> Unless it's like a showcase or something, then I got to kind of like, all right, well, that was tight. That wasn't, you know, that's a little bit different. But when you're going up against someone, it's you versus them. It's not just you. So whatever you're going to pull out there depends on what that other person is also doing. So you got to look at that, too. That's a, that's also a thing that judges, you know, should be, I think, really looking at. Totally. And now I'm going to switch the roles here and put you mm -hmm. in that position of the battler. OK. And, and what are you uh, what's going through your mind like before going into the battle like when the music's playing? Uh, I used to. Uh, I guess you could say semi prepare for these things um, to where I'd be like, all right, I think I'm going to do this, this and this in this battle. Um, you know, but I got to a point where I start, I started letting that stuff go and I let the music just kind of dictate what's going to happen. But then I also try to be as present as possible. So I really do look at what the other person is doing. Um, it's a little bit hard when you have these one round battles, right? And especially if you're going to go first, there's nothing to answer. So you just got to kind of like set the bar. But being present and knowing that can make the decisions of what's going to happen for you. You know, so I just really try to be 
there. I really try to show up and say, okay, what's happening in this moment? And then I make my decisions based on that. Um, and I think that's just come through experience and, uh, outside of the battle, you just try to prepare to be ready for whatever those situations are going to be. So as someone who battles, I just try to, again, go back home, micromanage my, my, you know, everything, make sure I have certain bullets in the chamber. And then I show up fully loaded and then I make my decisions based on what I'm seeing in front of me. Oof, love it, man. going to quote you on that for sure. <laughs> nice. <laughs> These days, are you, are you still battling a lot? Yeah, I'm actually, I'm leaving tomorrow to go to the, uh, the BC1 in Houston. So nice. they have a two-on-two -two battle that they're doing now. It's a B-boy, B-girl, and popper battle. So they're basically inviting top eight B-boys, B-girls, top eight poppers, and then you get randomly paired up with someone, and that's your partner that you battle with. Well, that's um, sick. Yeah, so they're going to be playing like a mixture of music, too. So it's a bit of an all-styles type of feel, but it's just popping and breaking. You know, and you get paired up with a popper, and then you go ahead and battle. So I'm invited to that, which is dope. I'm really excited about that. And then the next day, um, we have a little all-star team of our own, but we're going to be uh, doing an exhibition against the Red Bull All-Stars the next day. So Oof, that's going to be yeah. fire, man. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be cool, man. I'm excited for that, you know, for sure. Dope. Yeah, I'm still battling, man. I do, I do my thing here and there. Um, I, I fully enjoy battles off of the stage. You know, I still have just, I guess, this kind of like cipher mentality. Um, even though I do also love the competition energy, I think there's something about it, too, that's different. Like, you really have to strategize a little bit differently than you would if you just met someone in the cipher. You know, they're two, they're kind of two different games. So you have to like really, really plan a little bit differently, but it's challenging for me. So I'm trying to do that as long as I can. Totally. Is there anything specific you're doing to, to prep for these battles? Or are you kind of, are you kind of past that now at this point? Um, I think just physically from, for me, um, I, I, you know, I'm 38 now. So the thing for me is to make sure my body's just physically ready. So, you know, I, I, I fast, you know, that's something I do diet wise and I do that all the time. You know, I, I only eat four to five hours in a day and I fast for the rest of the day. And that's been giving me the energy that I need and also just kind of helping me in terms of longevity wise. What I'm putting into my body would be more like um, that fluctuates because I don't I don't want to kind of stay on this stay, same regimen with what I'm eating. So I'll go through times where I'm eating just strictly meat diets. And then sometimes I'll go in and out of vegetables. Sometimes I'll mix it up. I just think it's good for the system to do that. And this is stuff that I've been experimenting just with my own body for like the past couple of years. I really should be writing this stuff down <laughs> you know, because it is a bit of a science. Everything that I do, I approach as a science project or some type of a thesis. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm trying to learn as much about my own body as I do these things. Um, but yeah, that's that's really something that I've been focusing on a lot. And yeah, I go to the gym at least three to four times a week. You know, I, I kind of separate my muscle groups. So I'm working on, you know, things that I feel are relative to what I'm doing in the movement of breaking. So core is the main thing that I focus on and then everything breaks down from there. So if I need to build strength in my shoulders or my biceps, I'm trying to really feel that out while I'm dancing. What am I feeling? What do I need more strength in? And I just try to work those groups um, as I'm feeling those things. So things are, are constantly evolving and changing. It all depends on how I feel. Right. And is that uh, intermittent fasting that you're doing? Yeah, that's the word for it. <laughs> yeah. And there's times where I'll just straight up fast. Like I, 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 I do have 24 hour days, you know, and I, I, that all depends, man. And, and I, I go, I go with the feel, you know, if my body tells me that it just doesn't want to eat, then I just won't eat, mm -hmm. you know, and there's times I just found myself going into that when, you know, it'd be like 8 PM and I sit in there and I'm like, Oh shit! I didn't actually eat anything today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you know, and I'm like, cool. Like, I won't force it. Like, if I know, okay, I start eating at, at, at 1 o'clock, you know, I won't just eat at 1 because I'm hungry. I might wait out a little bit. Or if I knew that I put some time in, in the gym in the morning, I know I might need to replenish my muscles a bit. Okay, maybe I should eat something, you know. But the less eating is actually starting to become something um, good for me. You know, mm -hmm. I've been realizing certain habits culturally and just in general. So I started cutting those things out. You know, ever since I, I really started traveling, I started learning many different things, man. So that that really shaped my mind to start thinking deeper about what it is that I'm doing personally and how I'm kind of going about my business as as me, you know, and what I'm involved in. So like the food changes, my thought process changes. But all of that has been really beneficial, man. The more things I question, the more I'm starting to learn that what I'm doing sometimes is not always right. And I have to experiment to find the things that are right. And so that's been like my journey. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Damn. So could you go into maybe a little bit more detail about that? Like, I know you're talking about how your diet is affecting other areas of your life and the way you're thinking, energy yeah. levels. Could you just go into a little bit more details on maybe some of the specifics? Um focus you know that's it's changed my focus in my brain you know i've realized that when i ate i would get tired or my brain which you know slow down you don't really know this until you start to feel the opposite of that you know you you really have to go to the extreme well, I do. I'm an extremist. That's what I do. In order for me to learn, I'll take things to the extreme and I'll be like, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> and you realize everything is a balance. You just have to know how to balance it for yourself, you know. But what I've learned is that when I started fasting and when I cut out food altogether, man, my body was going through all these changes and it felt crazy for a while. But then I also realized I said, oh, OK, this, I needed to feel this. I needed to feel what that felt like. My focus in my brain right now is so, what seems to me at the moment, crystal clear. You know, I make better decisions. I can do multiple things. My memory just doesn't seem to slip. You know, I, I'm pretty on point, you know, and I like that feeling. And it started actually first when I cut out alcohol altogether, you know. I'll have a drink here and there. I can. You know, I'm not a tight ass about things necessarily, but I just know when I need to get on point. You know, so when I started cutting out alcohol, that's probably one of the first things I've realized. I said, "Wow, I could really like focus on. So I can almost move things with my brain." You know, <laughs> if I could, I believe that that's something that's possible too. You know, if if we really like become a little more in tune with ourselves, we can probably do all types of stuff we never thought we could do. And it's those types of feelings. And then when you start becoming successful at the things that you focus on, you go, damn, now what else is possible? You know, so I'm learning this balance, this back and forth conversation between my brain and my body and how powerful that is. And I think that's just where I'm at right now with that kind of stuff. Dope, man. Oh, all right. Like, this is getting pretty heavy. Like, how is this? Uh, <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you get this like feeling of focus? during uh battling and during your your breaking or when you're listening to the music yes um and that's what i mean by being tapped in or tuned in you know um you know there is this element of freedom that we speak about right this is like i call it the hypnotic that's a very um common term for musicians and stuff but you get into this thing where it's almost like you know something else is controlling you and you're just going about your thing it's a uh, interesting place or interesting space even because it's like you're totally focused but at the same time it's almost like having an out-of-body experience where you're looking at yourself like damn am i doing that <laughs> it's, it's this it's both you know and i find that to be a place that i try to get to every time i step out you know into the cypher or on stage or whatever it is if i'm about to dance I try to reach whatever that is, you know, and, and I don't make it there every time. I really don't. Um, and sometimes it's a very short moment, 
in the time that I'm dancing, but that's my ultimate goal. I always try to get to that point where I'm just just moving through. It's like in the Matrix, you know what I'm saying? When like, you know, <laughs> when Neo's there and the bullets are coming towards him and he's just like moving to the side and he's like, ooh, he, can, he can see everything that's happening, but yet it seems like there's this like complete blurred moment. Time is stopping, but yet it's still moving. That's what it's like to me, you know, and I try to get that every time. Yes, okay, this I love this. One one thing I love about these interviews is is hearing like people like you speak about these sort of things. I just want to get out and practice right now and try to <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. try to feel it. And then, do you uh try to? I guess you try to receive these kind of places in your practices too. Like, do you do you find it better when you're practicing by yourself or or in a group or like sharing energy with a with a group of people? I think all of it. You know, I. I I kind of just, uh, I feel like I need all of that to continue. You know, I need my space, my time, and then I, I need to build with others. I think it's all relative. Perfect, man. This is an awesome interview. I need to listen to this thing like 10 times right now just to <laughs> digest everything. Thanks, man. Yeah, before we wrap up here, do you have a, some parting advice maybe for, for a B-boy who's, you know, a couple years in and still kind of struggling to, to find their own, their own way? Yeah, keep going. You know, I think we put a, we time limit ourselves all the time. And um, that's just, uh, that's something we put in our heads. There's no rush to get anywhere. And at the same time, there's no time. So uh, if that's the case, then, I mean, I don't know what people are really worried about. I mean, if you enjoy it, you know, you'll spend as much time as you need, you know, to get to where you, you want to get to. But let it happen, you know, let let things take their time, however long they take and enjoy the process. Like to me, process is everything like I enjoy products. But at the same time, when you learn about people's processes, it's way more deeper than that. You know, you start to realize and understand the product a bit more when you understand the process. So, you know, go through that process, enjoy that whole time because it's great and, and learn about yourself. So. You know, don't don't limit yourself in time. Just keep going um, and stay at it because, you know, you're you're always going to go through ups and downs. So if you're in the long down period, just know you'll get out of it at some point. But, you know, when you trust the process of it, you'll you'll know that you're in that position for a reason. You're going to learn something and you're going to pull yourself out of it. And once you figure out what that is, then you go, oh, damn and then you're like okay nice 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 now you can move on to the next thing so yeah just take your time that's that's my advice to any of these guys all right perfect man i know you got a lot going on is there anything specific that you want people to check out on your on your website and instagram mm, just keep watching man i got a lot of interesting projects coming up i got a lot of cool music things that will be um i'll be posting up within the next year um yeah, and more visuals, just more more art, more stuff to, to check out and hopefully inspire some people. Um, and then, yeah, when it comes to the education aspect, when I start really moving forward with those things, people will see it through there. They'll see it through the Instagram and the website. And, and uh, there will always be information up there about how you can get involved, too. Dope. And that's your Instagram is uh, Why Notism, yeah? Yes, correct. And whynotism.com? Yep, that's the website. Perfect, man. Can you, could you give us a maybe a sneak peek, maybe something specific that's coming up in the pipeline? A project of yours that you're working on? Okay, let me see. <laughs> um, damn, what should I put out there? I know most recently you had the, uh, it was a table, right? Oh, the chair design. That the I chair, was yeah, with the S. That was yeah, yeah. That's. I have some other stuff coming up soon. I, I'm I'm going through a little wave of sculpture first before I get back to like um, anything that has some type of function. Um, right now, it's just aesthetics that I'm building. So I have some sculptures that I'll, I'll be posting pretty soon. That would be interesting to check out. Um, and and currently, I'm just working on a music project. I'm working on an EP with Bahamadia. And I'll be putting that up, hopefully, towards the end of the summer. So um, any people who are fans of some 
interesting hip hop and then fans of Bahamadia or myself, they can check that out. That's going to be really nice, man. That's going to be an EP hopefully out by, I don't even know. We just, <laughs> we don't, we don't set dates, you know, we just go until we're like, okay, it's done, you know, but that's what I'm currently working on now. So be on the lookout for that. Yo, for sure. All right, guys, be sure to follow Why Not at his Instagram, peep his website. Make sure to keep up to date for when that EP drops and whatever else he's got going on. I know he's always got something on the go. Yup. <laughs> All right, guys, you've been hanging out with Why Not and your host, Wolvie. Head over to indecipher.com, search Why Not in the search bar, and his show notes page will come up with everything we've been talking about today. Just want to say thank you to Why Not. This was such a legendary interview, and I'm so stoked to be able to get to talk to you. Your cool, message, thanks, yeah, for sure. Your message will reach and inspire many B boys and B girls around the world. So today we got to learn from one of the greatest. Hope to have you back on the show, but until then, we'll catch you in the cipher. Word, thanks, man. Appreciate it. And there you have it, guys. The legendary Why Not Vice President of the Legendary Rock Steady Crew. True honor to have him be our first guest on the show. The man is a true professional on and off the dance floor. Appreciate it, bro. Be sure to check out his website, whynotism.com, and his Instagram, at whynotism. This man does not stop and has always got something on the go. So be sure to check out his Instagram. Stay tuned for what he's putting out next. All of these links and more will be on the show notes page of our website, inthecipher.com. Be sure to check it out. All the links will be there. And while you're checking out Why Not's Instagram, be sure to follow us on there too, at underscore in the cipher. And do you have a B-boy or B-girl you want me to interview? Well, you're in luck. <laughs> if you let me know who you want on the show and you have a specific question or topic you want them to speak on, then co comment on any Why Not photo on our Instagram page and I'll do my best to get your question answered on the show and give you a shout out while I'm at it. Guys, thank you so much for listening to the very first episode of the show. Show your support by sharing the episode with your friends if you think Why Not could teach them a thing or two. Alright guys, until then, I'll catch you guys in the cypher. Take care. Peace.